Jehova Malak, Olam Olamat, Jehova Malak, Yami Rakis, Jehova Gadol, Makarian Tios, Jehova Erdanai, Jehova Elohim, Kurios Tios Mantakreta, Kurios Tios Pistos, Alda et Jehova, El Emuna Jehova, Ibasilian Kurios, Otios, O Pantacreta, Basilios, Basilian, Kai Kurios, Kurion, Jehova Dabar Halal, Elohim Dabar Halal, Jehova Elohim, Gadol Gadol Geburra, El Elohim Israel, Jesus Christos, Ton Christon Isun Ton Kurion, Kurion Nimohagion Pantacreta, Gadol Gadol Geburra, <coughs> Zaan Logan Ogar Tautios, Dulas Desmios and Despotes and Isus Christos, Kurion Kurion Kurion. Hagion, 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 <coughs> Pantacreta, Gadol, Gadol, Gebura. Yehova Ishmalkam, Yehova Shamma. Yelnakum Yehova, Yelnakum Yapa. <coughs> Natsak Israel, La Shaker. Gava Gava, Triombos Yehova, Isus Christos, Pantacreta, Numa Hagion, Numa Hotios, Gadol Gadol, Gebura, Derek, Emunabakar, Mishfat, Shava. The Megalogai of Yahweh El Elyon Elohim is always alive and powerful. Sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, or training in righteousness, that the man of Lord God might be mature thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, a very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and inherent great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Siddhkeno, to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth. To those who believe in my Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone. Great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath. In the cherishing and in this nurturing of this great and unique indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Ghost. Dear brethren, one more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory, understanding the very purpose of our life wherewith we survive by eating the word of God. And we don't have any other purpose on this earth to survive apart from eating the word of God on this pilgrimage trip to make our lives conform to the image of Christ. The sooner the better we wake up to understand the strength which drives us or the thing which makes us to be render and fit is nothing but the Word of God. As we look into the mirror of the Word of the Lord of our God day by day, we need to wake up how many people are far away to the complete structure 
full measure stature of the thinking of Christ to be formed. In Colossians 1, when Apostle Paul says, to pay the suffering of Christ in this body at least a little part, he goes on further to mention not the sufferings of Christ on the cross, but the sufferings, what we call today in the present Christendom, mental agony of my Christ. The mental agony to look and to understand that children are at the stage of birth, but there is no strength to produce them. The mental agony what the people are not able to come and understand the great and unique life in the church age given for us so that we could be presented before God the Father perfect and complete. And that is what he says each and every one to be presented perfect and complete. But when we look into the lives of this present Christendom, dear brethren, there aren't enough men so that we can tell, that we can talk to them the doctrine of meat rather than the doctrine of milk. In 1 Corinthians 3, when Apostle Paul teaches to that congregation, he says, I have a lot many things to teach, but you are not able to endure that meat kind of a doctrine because you are still babes in Christ. How you can become an expert or a master when you practice it. Any field, if you are beginning your business as a plumber, after five years of practice and experience you could become now a little master. If you want to become in any particular field, to be an expert, it takes practice, prasso, then how much more it has to be in the Word of God to change from the crowd of milk to the crowd of meat. You all are indeed not Christians, if ever you would look in the viewpoint of Acts chapter 11. Minimum 3,650 hours of training in the Word of God. Then we can call you disciples. And to present you before God the Father, perfect and complete, <coughs> minimum, three times, 3,650 hours. That's what Apostle Paul teaches in Acts chapter 20. For three years, day and night, with tears being shed, we have taught you the entire counsel of God, withholding back nothing so that we could be pure from the blood which could be upon your own head. The reason why we tell you these things is that the food which you eat drives you to live on this earth. And the food which can drive you is nothing but the word of God. Any other details of life, nothing is superior than to go and acquire every day your word of God. Unbelievers may think they have achieved a lot many things in this life, but for us to be content with food and raiment and to go on to do the will of God the Father is a great achievement as believers in Christ. So the only thing which sustains us, the only thing which keeps us alive or makes us to march ahead is the infallible and inherent word of God. Only thing that keeps us alive. And we find in the book of Revolution chapter 10 in verse 11 and 10, 10 and 10, 11 In thy mouth it would be sweet but when it goes to your belly it will be bitter. Because knowing the things in the word of Lord God is a great joy. Looking upon the practices of this men as if they have been true believers in Christ, 
but in reality they don't match to the word of God. When we look into their lives, it's bitter. It's a pain. And you men are perishing without knowing the right word of God. And what the work of Christ which he has given for us to the church after the great resurrection of my Lord which we have been noticing from Proverbs chapter 31. The first thing, when you sell your garments being prepared, you're going to challenge the jealousy of Satan. The second thing, strength and honor you're going to clothe up and law of kindness in your mouth because you're going to open up your mouth with wisdom. And in each and every of the words we look the thing which the church has to do right now, right now, not after your rapture. You should be clothed with strength and honor. You should have the wisdom of God. Your mouth should be the law of kindness. Right now, in this church age, we ought to be so. Not after we die, but right now. And today, people are not able to realize nor they understand that the only thing which drives them to keep alive is the Word of God. If not, there is nothing on this earth which you can think in this flesh can carry on to be alive to enjoy the details of the lusts of the flesh. What else you can do by sinning against your own body? And that's what we need to look. If that which is not yours, you are not able to take care properly, as we read that in the book, Gospel of Matthew. That which is yours, how God the Father would give unto you. Dear brethren, use the privacy of your priesthood to confess your sins through rebound and let come back and learn the mind of Christ which God the Father has prepared and kept for us on today's date in eternity past to the praise of his glory in his grace. Sanctify yourselves to look upon the great and unique pale wonders of this word and we shall continue after this prayer. Infinitely divine Holy Father once again coming unto the grace of the Lord to learn the word. We don't deserve anything on this earth, O oh Father, wherewith we could make our boast in it. Everything is your grace. In that grace, Father, many men who have failed to mould their lives to the demands of the word of God, and many men who are like foxes in the deserts who have entered into the ministry, who are making their lives upon such souls of yours, which is your flock. And yet, O oh Lord, the crowd of such flattering titles men whom you haven't sent, they are reigning in the pulpits. But in your grace, O oh Lord, you have given us the strength through the word of God and the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, because if God be with us, who can be against us? Once again, to establish the right and unique things of the word in the pulpits, wherewith men are perishing without knowing the word. And each and every precious soul of yours, O Lord, you take care of it, as you have illustrated for us. The sheep which is lost, you left the ninety-nine to seek the lost sheep, in the parable of Luke 15. Every soul which believes in Christ, O Lord, whether they're educated or uneducated, Lord. It's the duty of the pastor teacher to present them before you perfect and complete, to fulfill and to carry the burden of your mental agony, wherewith looking upon the lives of the souls which are not been inculcated by the word of God. And in return there being the pastors who are ruling with cruelty, 
who are not having that favor of learning the word at of father in your grace you are provided for us to understand your teachings your mind so that we could wake up and realize and understand the importance of this calling in the church age and make up our lives worthy to eat the food with a great joy lord it's like a sweeter than honey in our mouth but looking into our stomach belly bitten with searches all the things of the bitten of your spirit when we find the practices of this man they do not match and at the cost of each and every perishing soul of father we have this burden to know and to come back with the will of your with the will and plan of yours to make every believer to be presented in their presence perfect and complete in all wisdom and understanding make us known the ways teach us the paths lead us as such how we shall be in the presence and fulfilling the will so that lord every soul is accountable and we are here o lord to give them get acquainted with the word of god and make them in return to be making as grammatiers going and making disciples of all the nations so father the things which are prepared and kept for us on today's state and retreat past we pray the mentoring ministry of lord god the holy ghost to guide us and to lead us and to enlighten us according to thy truth and according to thy rights and approval of your will in christ name we pray father amen In Job chapter 31 when we are looking the number of verses how is going to claim from verse number 2 he goes on to teach for us the standards of this great word of god which is emphasized in chapter 31 this one particular verse in verse number 13 if i despise the cause of my man servant or my maid servant when they contended with me what then shall i do when god riseth up when he visiteth what shall i answer the word despise in the hebrew it is called to be maas pictographical representation teaches the flow of blood in pressure so here dissolving or melting away something not having a pain in your heart every day you pass by without becoming the word of god still like milk rather than meat because the one who is drinking milk is still unrighteous he is not skillful in handling the righteous word of god but strong may belong unto them who are able to discern between good and evil so here you are dissolving or melting away what you ought to be in the lord becoming the light and salt of the earth and making known to this world the manifold wisdom of god the polypicolous riches of christ where with every believer is under equal privilege and equal opportunity the way have this pastors over here on this earth when we look foxes in the deserts the congregation which is also equally capable in the spiritual life give to grow up into the grace of the lord the pastors or the men who are overseers or in charge they aren't emphasizing them to look their future after they die and when you look upon the fate of this people 
it's so pain in our heart to tell that even such souls are in the sight of God to be saved to reach as the perfect pitch of stature of the thinking of Christ to know and to practice on this earth the witnesses of the Lord so when we look upon their lives they come up with great love to provide each and everything their food their clothing their shelter it is as good as what Ezekiel says you take their wool you squeeze the blood you take the milk and you eat the meat but you are harsh towards the flock by rejecting dissolving and melting away that which is the exact demand of the word of the lord of a god that they should be presented before christ perfect and complete that which is the demand of the lord you are rejecting that you are refusing it you are despising it but on the contrary you squeeze and take everything from them when we look into the lives of these people as lord god would say to that prophet in first kings when jeroboam stretched forth his hand to take care or to handle that man of god his hand was shriveled up and he told though he would give half of his kingdom you shall not even drink or eat anything from that place but being deceived by the old prophet he goes to eat looking into that context and applying when we find such men who are so much poor destitute the word called to be potakas destitute not in love destitute not for food destitute for the word of god and such a great pain even to eat or drink from that place at the cost of their perishing souls our hands being stained with the souls of such men who are also having the equal privilege and opportunity to be presented before God perfect and complete but the pastors who have neglected the duty and the believers who haven't been properly instructed to take in the word of Lord God as number one priority how we could eat and drink how we could be in the presence of such people to say everything is fine everything will be okay everything will be correct but in reality they are daubed with untempered mortar the fallow grounds are not been broken up and when and how will you sow the seed you should really prick your hearts to look and to understand the men over here in such places where we go for survey the negligence of feeding the word of god day by day but at lord god the father makes a great commission upon our shoulders to tell in matthew 28 go and make disciples of all the nations and you believers are still slumbering enough in your excuses in your day to day life to search for the food what to eat what to drink to care for the details of life and tomorrow that which is eternity forever and you as believers looking upon the time should be the communicators of bible doctrine with the holy manner walk of life you haven't gone to those places to teach to them you haven't sought them you haven't found them you haven't made up your life but you are just slumbering just you are slumbering and sticking upon your great named churches but in reality you are not even having to face the caliber like the judge galio in acts chapter 15 in acts chapter 18 and 19 it has to be when they put a case upon paul saying that this man is persuading to worship god contrary to the law galio says this is not my business that is with your law with your words you go and decide according to the laws of your word of god i don't have the knowledge on that neither i have anything to do with that 
and he just dismisses the tribunal. In 1 Corinthians 6, when we look, is not there a man who could be mature enough to teach and to distinguish between the cases that is happening among you? But the call of Lord God is that you have to judge the angels. So is there not a man who is perfect, who is mature enough? You know, that's what it is lacking in our pulpits. That's why you stick on to your church. That's why you fight for your eldership. And you think you're comfortable in your comfort zones. If there is something of a higher degree of temperature, you want to put on your AC so that you can maintain that room with the temperature of that body wherewith you can think it's good and comfortable with that. But at the cost of this perishing souls, tomorrow for your negligence in your work, you'll be burning in the lake of fire because you are enjoying and relaxing, slumbering, and whatsoever you want you add, at the cost of such innocent souls. The mental agony of my Christ in Mark chapter 14, which we read in verse number 33. He was depressed, he was agitated, not that he is going to go to the cross, but he knew there are a lot many things to teach. He knew that he has to make them to be perfect and complete in the complete wisdom and the knowledge of God. But they're dull of hearing, therefore he sent Lord God the Holy Ghost, not this Tom, Dick and Harry as we noted yesterday to be Muhammad. He is in the form of flesh and form of flesh is sin. Christ our Lord our God was also in the form of flesh but he was a virgin birth out of sin. Therefore he claims you can find any fault in me then prove it. There is nothing fault in Christ Jesus. And if you would ask any fault in Muhammad, you will find ample of reasons. Having to be with twelve wives. And all those things which is even worthless to talk upon our tongue. And he said, Lord God, the Holy Ghost, when he cometh, it is exactly like one of the character of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to be absolutely holy and blameless. It cannot be like man of this nature who disobeys even the moral characters of integrity of men on this earth. God created one man, one woman. Stealing out so many women is what Solomon fell into idolatry. His heart turned away from the Lord because to please the woman of him and men are not able to realize the breath which has been left over, he claims in Malachi 2.14. The residue of your breath, he makes your wife. And the godly children he gives for the purpose of Lord God to serve him on this earth in the realm that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word of the Lord and to make known all nations that Jehovah Elohim is the only Lord of a God being revealed through his Son in the form of flesh, now being manifested for us in the realm of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, to know that these three are one. And people don't understand this. The technical term given the Trinity, which meant to say trichotomous nature, that's what man was earlier itself, before his fall. He was having a body, soul, and spirit. In fulfilling the trichotomous nature, we'll find God the Father, God the Son, and Lord God the Holy Ghost. So these men don't understand the importance of which cause Jehovah Elohim has made to make known to this world that he is the only true Lord of a God. There is none besides him. And that's what we, the church age believers, should proclaim. When we are mature enough in the work of the Lord, when we are making up to be in the will of the Lord, and we being trichotomous after sin, fallen into dichotomy, that is body and soul, being born again, regenerated, believing in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we would become again trichotomous. And that work, what we have on this earth, as giving to us the progeny through the children, is to teach them the fear of the Lord 
and to make them capable men to survive on this earth in honoring the Lord's work and the Lord's glory to the highest. But today, dear brethren, when we look at the cost of the perishing souls, including the so-called flattering titles like bishops or popes, or having to be reverends or doctorates, not going and looking the utmost part, not able to realize the pain and the burden of this man. The mental agony of my Christ, when we notice, it is not that he is going to be dying on the cross and being a waking up into resurrection body, or the three hours of fellowship to be broken up, much more greater pain than that is that he is not able to find this man, how and who will guard them. Therefore, he says, you as disciples joined, grow up into grammatias, encourage one another as long as it has been called today, and do not be as are despising ones to the needs of the one who are in the same family of God. But dear brethren, you yourselves are first despising and rejecting the will of God, which is to carry every day across, fall on to Christ, become the disciples of the word of the Lord. You yourselves are rejecting that first. And what a great pain it is for us to look. That which is yours, you are not able to take care. Then that which is for your men servant or maid servant, how would you contend? Therefore he says, if I despised and today many will not stand in this realm because in your blood you don't have the burden for the perishing souls. You don't have the burden for your fellow man who has to be perfect and complete in the thorough knowledge of the word of God. As Apostle Paul says for us, as Lord and Savior as Jesus Christ teaches for us, what you want to for yourself, you do ensure it for others. If we want to be completely matched and perfected in the image of God, we should do and show it for others. We should lead them in the path rather than dissolving it or melting away, which is of a waste or a fainting away because of the outside force. So he says, if I did despise the cause, the word cause is judgment, shafat. And what is that judgment, dear brethren? If you would judge yourselves, you shall not be judged. If you would make known yourselves very well, that if these men are still grieving and squelching and waxing and lying and resisting, and if you don't wake them up to understand that this is not the way of life, our life is something different, our life is something superb, we cannot be in the realm of grieving or squelching or waxing or lying to Lord God the Holy Ghost. But rather, Lord God, the Holy Ghost is prothumai, all the time ready to do the will of God. And there is no way which we can think, we can despise. Therefore, he says, first, your thought process of meditating, munching process of meditating. How about your mouth to be opened if it is not the good things of the Lord God, the good deeds of the Lord God, as we look in the book of Psalms, I shall praise the Lord for all the goodness what he has done. Bless the Lord, O my soul, as you quote that verse. And famous song by many men who have sung like Don Meon. Bless the Lord, O my soul, for what? For all the goodness that has been stored. For what goodness you have at the cost of these perishing souls. How can you eat and drink? The unbelievers at one end, they do not know the gospel, wherewith the believers should become the gospel when they have been properly trained or acquainted in the word of the Lord. When these believers who have to be properly trained or been acquainted with the word of the Lord, 
they can become the gospel, they can become the burden, they can have the judgment. All the time having the burden in them to know that my men are perishing. The burden in their blood. That the church age, in fact indeed the entire heaven and the earth should be filled with the glory of God. And over here, when we look upon this great word which says, The earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord God, as we look upon that word in Numbers 14.21, Nevertheless, for truth, as I live, said the Lord God, the earth shall be filled with the glory of Lord God, because heaven and the earth shall be made in the standards of the word, what he claims, go and make disciples of all the nations. But we are not burdened with that burden, we are burdened with our comfort zones. What I drink, what I wear, where I live, where I reside, what AC I want, you know, just for the sake of your temperature to be raised up, you require some AC, then how much more it will be a temperature in the hell when you're burning? Just imagine. <coughs> because you men are not able to realize how much negligent you are. Looking upon the time, you should be the communicators, you should send your disciples, you should make up your grammatical men grown up to go and make disciples. Teach them. At least what you know, teach them. <coughs> At least what you can understand, tell them, because they are even without that knowledge. And we cannot taste the grace of God every day to make it as a vain glory of usage. If you are not able to make up every day the grace of God into a proper account to be given to God the Father, <coughs> because you are answerable tomorrow. At the cost of these perishing souls, you are not able to wake up and come back and do that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord. At the cost of such great word of God, which has been given for us. And Lord God says, do not give this food, do not cast it to the dogs, they can't handle it. Yet, because of the faith of the Syrophoenician woman, thinking that all the men will be like that caliber to eat the crumbs from the table, the pieces of information which you have to take and you have to be very diligent enough on this earth to get first formulated. And the only thing that keeps you alive and surviving is that word of God, the burden of the Lord, wherewith as long as you have breath in your nostrils, you have to continue that in proving it. There is nothing that can keep you alive or drive you to be alive. It is the burden and the word of the Lord of our God. And we have several illustrations over there, even in First Kings chapter 19. You know, one meal and 40 days of walk. <coughs> what is driving him? The burden of the Lord. The same thing we look in the Hebrew the, for the word kala or akal. What is that you're going to eat? What is the call to be the meat? The eating process or the meeting, what you call the meat to eat, to be filling your stomach. The grammatia should go and make disciples. That's the only process. That's the only way. That's the only method. The grammatia should go and make disciples. That's what you eat. That's what you, that should drive you. That's what it should be in the process of making you to be alive. If there is anything that which is eating you, if you go to a psychopath, because you are a psychopath to a psychiatrist, he says there, or he or she says, there is something, depression in this brain of this man. There is something constantly of worry that is eating him up. And when you have that worry or pressure, your own cells, like cancer, they eat off. You know, this is what the effect of having to eat in your own status of depression. But in Christ it is not so, in Jeremiah 23, 9 says. 
we have this burden but it is the strength of the lord the word of god which drives us because we have to be clothed with strength and honor and we need to open up our mouth with wisdom and we need to show forth the law of kindness in our lashon tongue so dear brethren here we have that which is driving you that which is eating you up and that should be all the time to make every believer growing up into grammatias and in return they multiply and go and make disciples of all the nations that is the thing which should drive you but here dear brethren you are despising rejecting the word of god that's what he says if i did despise the judgment the judgment is nothing but for us as the rule which rules over for the things pertaining to be like wrong doing or as a ruler which rules over the cases and the action of deciding such so the word judgment is now you have been ruled over by satan because satan is what it is raining in your mind that's why you love lies you make lie you live lie the work of satan is to not know the truth despise you make up your mind to reject the word of god so the mishfat or the judgment which you are munching up which you have opening up your mouth which you have put upon in your basket all the good things he says if it is not been guided by the word of god then quite obviously you will be guided by the rule of this power on this earth and what is that the rule on the power of this earth all sin nature activities that's the rule the lust of flesh the lust of eye and the pride of life that's why you don't worry about the cost of the perishing souls that's why you don't realize every believer should be perfect and complete in the word of god so you let go them because you yourselves are not first acquainted to be in the work of christ sometimes we feel why you are coming to christ why you are coming to preach and stand in the pulpit to be to fulfill your belly to get a name and fame and at the end you think lord we did prophesy in thy name we did signs in thy name we did great wonders in thy name and god the father would think for you on your behalf you have done all these things so good and faithful steward you are <laughs> he would say workers of iniquity depart from you. you haven't done the will of god the father what is the will of god the father go and make disciples of all the nations the will of god the father make every believer to be acquainted with the word of the lord the will of god the father to make sure that they are being in the realm to escape from the flaming fire of the vengeance of god that they haven't done to know the word of god the lord so I haven't done the will the sanctification shutting the mouth of this foolish and ignorant people they haven't done this will and you say i came to be a church pastor for this reason for that reason do you have the burden of the lord do you know that they are already been ruled by the thinking of satan any translation which is not in exegesis of my standards to teach it's as good as being ruled over by satan because if you don't go back and dig and take for example as we are reading this word to eat the meat when he said to elijah in first kings chapter 19 the word eat is called there should be something of a driving force in you all the time to drive to say you should go and make disciples because you are now as a grammatias to the lord and that's what we find what after that great lesson not by might nor by power but by the spirit said the lord god of hosts he went straight the way to instruct at one place he instructed them he goes to the second place there were more than 50 or 100 men 
He instructed them, you know, that's what, making disciples, giving them as a grammatias the burden of the Lord into their hands. So you find his life. That's what the word eat. And we think in the English, just eat is to just put in your mouth, munch it, and gulp it inside. No, the word eat or the word meat in the pictographical representation it represents in the ancient Hebrew language. The scribe, hand, the palm of the hand, the next one is lama. So looking upon the hour of the need, where almost all 2,000 years of the beginning of Christendom we are, if they are yet believers or not acquainted with the word of the Lord of God, then first your duty as a believer in the church, your prime function is to get graduated in the word of the Lord. And you have to go and teach them. You know, the ten preachers in the church. And if only one is preaching, and the remaining nine are silent, it will be as good as saying that, that these are dumb dogs which cannot open up their mouth. But if these nine other preachers would look into the small villages, village by village, taking the word of Lord God and teaching them and training them up as we, dig, as we look in Second Chronicles chapter 17. There would be first the fear of the Lord. Rather than sitting idle in the church for nine, uh, the remaining nine men, if they would go to nine villages, if they would go to look that they have been matured well enough so that they could at least tell them the basic guidelines, you know, then you're really doing the work of the Lord and Lord God would really have a favor upon you. Because those who love the word of Lord God, God extends their life. And that's what with the great burden of our heart we are telling to you. Eating the word of Lord God is a great joy for us. But looking the result in our stomach, it's bitter. Because not many men are able to match the demands of the word of the Lord of a God, though we have been said in Ephesians 5, Acribos, arise, awake, to look upon the demands of the word of the Lord of a God. What exactly are the demands of the mind of Christ? Arise, awake, and look into it. But we are not able to find these people to match what are the demands of the word of the Lord my God. Do you think, is there anything that we're able to match? If the word of Lord God says, you have to go and make disciples of all the nations, are we able to match? Your fellow brethren who is there with you, encourage daily one another with the word of Lord God. Become mature believers because the harvest is plenty. He said in the time of gospel of John itself, arise your eyes and look, the harvest is plenty, but the righteous laborers are very, very few. The laborers who could be in the sense there are gone who occupy in the business of making disciples, who lead by an example, who would be a teacher. Such laborers are few when the work of the pastor teacher in the church is to make you to become such labor by giving you the inculcation of the word of God. And you're not able to realize how these men are able to make money upon such poor people. Potaka spiritually. And fill up our bellies at the cost of not giving them the word of God. You feed them the word of God and fill up your belly. That's a great joy. As Apostle Paul writes in the book of Galatians. If needed, you were there to pluck out your eyes and give for me. That was the love. As we look in the book of Acts, in the first beginning of the church, everyone would got all the things and they would share commonly with each other. You know, that's the great love we have. Because he is feeding them the word of God. He is giving them the eternity. He is giving them the standards of eternal life. He is giving them the instructions pertaining to after death what it would be. So on this earth, live holy and blameless. And since he's been burdened with that work, he's been occupied with that work. 
there is nothing further for us to have on this earth to be number one priority than to rightly divide it and to teach them that we have such kind of a great life to share all things in common. That's what we find in 1 John 1, 3. So that we might have fellowship, kainonia, common, to share all the things in common. And how we are going to share the things in common when they are able to mature in the word of God? You are going to share common the burden of the Lord, not the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher. The bona fide gift of the pastor teacher is to train you up to become the word of God and to teach you up according to the standards of the mind of Christ. It's a burden. The burden of being and making disciples of all the nations. It's a great, great, great invitation for us. We are just thinking that people are perishing without knowing Christ. But the reality is, the believers are perishing without acquainted with Christ. You're perishing not to become a partaker in the great burden of the Lord. And whatsoever you have done, being pastors, you might have eaten up the grace of God ample, because He provides in grace, and you also look. Though you eat so much, you know, the consumption, the average of the bike, for example, the average of the motor vehicle, anything, we would look, what is the mileage? Looking upon your mileage, for weekly ones, you eat. If you would estimate, a man could eat. Because we talk about the standards of this country, India. So, rice, an average, a man can eat in a week. Five cages or three or four cages, if he's a good eater. Meat chicken, or whatsoever it is. Just calculate on an average on a week what you're giving, what you're eating, what you're feeding, and how much you're input giving out to the Lord. Weekly, once you come as a professing Christian, conventional Christian, and not even bothered that you have to be looking upon as being kept in the sight of the Lord our God as a light to shine in the midst of this perverse and crooked nation generations and you have to train them up and teach them up according to the will of God not even worried, not even bothered about those words. So what do you do? Weekly ones we calculate your average, your mileage. Though you are poor and pathetic Yet God the Father would give you grace one more day. What for? So that you could be in the standards of taking his burden, sharing his burden, sharing the things in common. And though your average is not good, he sends pastor teachers to tune it up, to make up your life first, more than the necessary food. First you eat first the word of God, then the physical food. Because first, if you don't eat the word of Lord God, you will not understand the burden of the Lord God. You will despise the judgment. You will despise wherewith you will reject or refuse the people who are under the influence of Satan. Even in the churches, we are talking not about the unbelievers, because unbelievers are blinded. That's what we find in Second Corinthians 4. Unbelievers are blinded by their thinking. Therefore, they cannot understand the teaching of Christ. But when we come to the word of Lord God, when we look and understand the mind of Christ, it is so simple and clear over here for us to realize that even the believers are blinded because they are not able to wake up. That an average what you have to be to the Lord, you are not maintaining it up. That God the Father will give you grace. Why? Because He loveth you. Not that he has given more grace for you to sin. But grace for you to realize and to wake up that your calling in the church age is unique. The Old Testament Jews longed for it, but we have now given the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, followed by the completed can of scripture, followed by the standards of what we look the pastor teaches to rightly divide the word of truth and train you up and to guide you up. But that burden is not taken today in our pulpits. You know what men are looking? 
They are looking into the burden what to eat, what to drink, what to wear, how to have the lust of flesh, the lust of fire, the pride of life, and how to make up our life to say, while here on this earth, you know, that's what you would be thinking. Because your parents also will put in your eyes or in your mind, we should have a good constructed house, we should do this, we should do that. But at the end, do you think you can take anything? But what have we done to the will of Lord God the Father that alone abideth? He says in 1 John 2, 17. What have we done the will of God the Father? If ever you look, have you read at least once the Bible? Have you ever read and thought of how many people might who have not been reading in my country India we talk about? who might have not known how to read the Bible, my duty and my burden as being able to read the Bible, at least let me tell them what is their far less I could go back and cross-check and tell them in the standards of exegy of my word. And at the cost of such men and women, we love to send the pictographs of them, saying that we evangelized them, we gave them the word. And you get the money from foreign Enjoying the food at the cost of those souls which have been having no proper food to conform to the image of Christ. At their food you are able to eat and at their pictographs you are able to eat your food, feed your children. And so you are doing God's work and God is providing. Don't worry, you eat. Look into your consumption. Look into your mileage. Do you think have you really worked out? So that you can say, Lord, I am really worthy to have this food. If not Christ, our Lord of a God wouldn't have told. Even in eating and drinking, you give thanks to God. And therefore, Christ, our Lord of a God, mentions in John 4, 34, My meat is nothing but to do the will of God the Father. Men today have forgot to eat the will of God the Father as their meat. There is nothing that could drive them to become the meat to be the will of God the Father. If you grow up as a scribe, the New Testament demands in Matthew 13, 52, with Christ our Lord of God said in Matthew 23, verse 34, I will send wise men, prophets, and the scribes something far high above than the standards of the Jews, something far high above than the standards of the Egyptians. The scribes of the church age, you're really not able to understand. There's something far higher and greater. We're not still to reform from our sins. We are called to be something far higher greater. So here we look. The scribes, when he's going to send, when he grow up, then you will realize it is eating the word of God is joy or sweeter to our mouth but when it goes to the stomach it's bitter because the men are not what is the demand of the word of God. The men have not grown up what would be the great characters of the Lord's mind. It is a great bitter for us to look that at the cost of enjoying the details of life on this earth and the demands of the word of the Lord our God kept aside, you are not able to be. So he says, as a scribe, when we grow up, our next burden would be to go and make disciples. So you're not having that meat to eat, then the meat will be for you as the Father's will, as Lord and Savior Jesus Christ says in John 4, 34, and you would consider nothing to be greater or more important on this earth apart from carrying the work of the Lord our God every day in Christ. You don't realize that. You can't understand that. You're simply passing your time for the silly stupid details of life on this earth. Simply passing your time. Because first of all you don't have time to become a scribe. And second, you don't have love towards my Lord's command. In John 14, 15 or 15, 14 he said, If you love me, keep my commandments, guard my commandments. 
And you are my friends, he said, if you guard my commandments, feel us love towards Christ, not agape. And he calls you to be friend, Hatairos, in Matthew 22, in verse 12 through 14. Like a comrade, you have to be on this earth. Like a soldier of the Lord, you have to execute his plan on this earth. But yet we find that you are not used to God as a comrade. You are not philos to Lord God as the love which you have to give to Christ. You are not what are the demands of the word of Lord God. Then how? You could answer back to God saying, Lord, anyhow I have entered into the great festival of the great wedding invitation of your son, but I have been found naked, so he doesn't have any reasons to tell. So first we have to strengthen the roots of believers, which is to be in the standards of ground and pillar of truth, being rooted and grounded in Christ. Then you will know the need. As he said, as you love your fellow men, so you have to be loving your own self. So as Christ our Lord our God laid down his life for, for the world, so you as being believers in Christ, as brethren in Christ, you have to go and lay down your life for Christ, for your brethren. So dear brethren, here the logic with our Lord God is first strengthen, strengthen, strengthen. Who? The believers who come to the church first. And the greater you reject to become the strength, the greater you do not become what is the will of the Lord. You will despise the judgment of the man slave and the woman slave. And that's the word he says. That which is not yours, if you are not able to take care of it, how would God the Father would give to you that which is yours? Talking about this unrighteous mammon, what he says. So, in Job 31, if I despise the judgment of my manservant, called to be Abad, and the word manservant is a repeated witness of truth. So, he all the time keeps up his eyes into the structure of the thinking of his body, from where he is going to make the decision from the perception of the nine holes. And the maid servant is called to be the one who is being like a strong liquid to represent. So in the vigor and valor of its all of energy, having the blood in it, it is like a female slave. So we look, the man servant, the main servant, when they contended, the word contended is called over here in the Hebrew as rib, rib, or riab, rib. So when they controversy, you know, blessed are the one who makes peace, he says, who resolves that conflict. We the men are called over here in this church age to resolve this angelic conflict. So the word rib, rib is called to renovate the standards of your thinking, which has to be in your body. So the contention what they have, he says, when they are having lot of abundance, when they are having their head which is not in accord, which has to be in the word of Lord God. So he says, when they contend, our duty is to give them to open up our mouth as to be the divine oracles. That's what we find over here in Proverbs chapter 31 now. In verse number 26, it says, She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and her tongue is the law of kindness. Why? Because she maketh, or she maketh the fine linen and selleth it. And we read this word, maketh is to build up, and it actually begins fine linen, which is nothing but no matter whatever may be the pressure, she gets every perception into the thoughts of the word of Lord. And what purchase or what merchandise she is going to do, we read this word called to be as Makar. And Makar is nothing but for us. She has in her blood as grammatias grown up and having a head to be renovated. That's what she does. 
So she is having for us something which has been according to the selling agent or the word as scribes what she has been doing it. And then furthermore we find delivered griddles unto the merchant. And we read that in the Hebrew she has that authority as a gift because she has erected in her the structure of the mind of Christ and she gives an open challenge. It is not a merchant but Canaanite. We read that and the merchant over here is called in the Hebrew Canaanite and in the Hebrew Canaanite is called jealous. So she says, I have all the strength in me, the vigor and valor in me. I have renovated my mind according to the standards of the word of Lord God. So she's going to put a challenge and then strength and honor, horror clothing. And she shall rejoice in the time to come. We well, look here. She openeth her mouth with wisdom and a tongue in the law of kindness. And over here we find in Job chapter 31, when we look into this verse, he says, If I despise the cause of my manservant or of my maidservant, when they contended, the word contended meant to say, when the renovation of the standards of the thinking in their head, when they were not in accord with the word. That's what he says. When they were contented. So, when they're contending in the sense, how they have been taught. You, if you as a believer do not open up your mouth as to be the divine wisdom to them, to train them up in the demands of the word of the Lord, how they could learn. That's what how simple he says. And then he says, what then shall I build up when Elohim riseth up? You know, every time when you fail to establish from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun, as Jude says for us, as many as we can pull them from the lake of fire. If Lord God would rise, he says, what you will do? How will you build up your defense? You cannot because you are speechless. So he says, what then shall I do when God riseth up? When he visiteth me, the word visited is called pakot. And the word pakot meant to say, when they open up their mouths, from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun, when you are brought into an account, you are every nine holes of perceptions. Because therefore he says, is there anyone like a servant of mine who is blind to the world and deaf to the world? We don't have any thing to be on this earth in the realm that could be greater or having a supersonic eyes or having a great circumcised sensitive ears. There is nothing on this earth apart from to be blind and deaf to the world and to get in to know your every word that comes out from your mouth from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun to get into your every perception of the thought which have been given. If these things are being overseered, that means when he visited, what shall I answer him? The word answer is called over here for us as shub. And shub meant to say, to turn and to reply. Because he has now your every perception of your thought. He has everything what you're doing in your body. You know, people may say, looking London, talking Tokyo. In the same manner, God the Father knows what you're having in your perception of your thoughts. God the Father knows what is the perception in your body. So he can clearly understand it. So there is nothing that could be against the word of God. So he says, Job, if I despise, and today people are despising the fellow man growth, because you are first rejecting your growth. If you can't breathe in, you cannot breathe out. That's as simple as that. So first you have to graduate, then you can go and make disciples. That's what we find over here, to eat the strong meat. But your brethren, people are not able to eat the strong meat. So, dear brethren, we have to look 
do not despise the demands of the word of the Lord. The greater you despise what you ought to be to the people where you have been kept in Christ, God the Father will not give you that which is yours. Because he claims in that unrighteous mammon parable, saying that you were not fair enough to that which is not yours. And now how could I give you that which is yours because you are not faithful to mine standards of soul and spirit which I have given unto you. So he says over here, dear brethren, in Luke chapter 16 in verse number 11, if therefore you have not been faithful in unrighteous mammon, who will commit to you the trust of true riches? Because he says, you were not faithful to the word of God. And today as well, men are happy to take the details of life. He says in verse 12, And if you have not been faithful in that which is another's man, who shall give you that which is your own? That which is your own, that is your own, what you're going to have, the resurrection body in Christ. Guarding the soul and spirit which belongs to God the Father, you have not prepared them well for the work of the Lord. How could you expect that you're going to get your reward of eternal resurrection body in Christ for eternal life? that which is your own, that which you own it. And today, people are not able to understand that which you have to own in Christ. And men are still searching, seeking the things which are of the earth and not doing that which is needful to the Lord. He says in the Gospel of Luke chapter 10 in verse 42, but one thing is needful, the word needful Maria, uh, not Maria, it is called over here, to be as Keria, C-H-R-E-I-A, necessity, business, duty, or that which is absolutely useful. He says, that which is needful, Mary hath chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. Because he says in Colossians 3, 3, for if you are dead, and a life is hid with Christ in God, then when Christ, which is our life, shall appear, then shall you also appear with him. Therefore, necrosate, put to death, because he has called for us an inheritance, incorruptible, undefiled, which fadeth not away, reserved in heaven forever, who are kept by the power of God, dunamis will of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed, apakaluptai, to uncover in the last time the word eschatos followed by the word kairos your every moment being taken out so he says you are everything which has been reserved and kept and inheritance undefiled uncorruptible why do you want to not take care properly of the things which is belonging to god that is not yours if you're failing to take care which is belonging to lord god the father in heaven he is going to not give you that which is yours. And what is that you need to take care? Every perishing soul. First your growth in the word of God. First your mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, breath by breath. And then, when you're perfect and complete, you're having your life to take care. So, the work of the church, after the work of the pattern of Proverbs chapter 31, the work of the church, wherewith you have to strengthen, to be clothed with strength and honor. You have to be in the standards of opening up your mouth in wisdom. Looking upon the time, you shall find that you should be like Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in communicating the word of God. Because every believer is an ambassador to Christ. So that which is belonging to Lord God, the Father in heaven, if you haven't taken a proper care of it, how could you expect to be cared for your resurrection body when you go to heaven? 
So first produce in you what is having the soul and spirit which goes to be with God the Father in heaven after you die. Take a proper care of it. At the same time, when you have been eating up the word of God, which is a great joy, look into the standards of the bitterness of these people, where they haven't reached the mark of Christ. Though the word says in Proverbs 8.29, we have been predestined to the will of God the Father. If you have been predestined in the Lord, he says you have to conform to the image of God the Father. But what a sad thing we notice in the churches today for us. Though the fellow man perishes, we are not worried except to take and make money or make fortunes of us from their lives, from their souls. Having to feed your belly. But do your duty first. Because God the Father says the one who worketh is eligible for his salary or labor. Let him eat what he has labored. Not to eat that which is absolutely vain. Not to make up your life at the cost of this man being perished, at the cost of constantly being mindful. You know, the prime duty for us, dear brother, whether you believe it or not, you have to be constantly mindful to take every day the word of God, no matter what. Constantly you have to be mindful in gathering the word of God, constantly, day by day, word by word, line by line, precept upon precept. That's what we have been kept over here alive. The dogs which collect the crumbs from the fallen tables of the master is our daily food, is our daily survival. That's what will drive us, that's what will keep us alive, that's what will make us to be the meat of the Lord. As Lord and Savior Jesus Christ says in John 4.34, that's what it drives us. How much of the time you are really spending to do the meat of the Lord? Time is short. Looking upon the time you should be the men well prepared, ready to do the Lord's battle. Feed them, pull them as much as they can out of the work of Satan on this earth, under that influence, what we call judgment. Mesfat meant to say having rulers overseers and today what is that that is ruling your head so he says get every thought into captivity for Christ make up your every perception in the mind of the Lord of a God make it up for the captivity for Christ and today men are not happy to find that <laughs> dear brethren people in the church age have really not understood the prayer of Paul Tim of privilege was given to them and Christ our Lord our God was right when he said it is not good to cast the foot of children to dogs but that in his grace he has given us the food and in Revelation 22 in verse 18 verse 16 we find dogs the first category of the section the men who are not of a pure mind, who are not properly trained, these dogs, they are holding the keys, they are neither entering, neither they are making any other one to enter. At least you men wake up, because we have the unction of the Lord in 1 John 2, 20 and 27. Having the fear of the Lord of a God, the first thing it drives you to know what is your life after death. Because the word of Lord God, the work of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, is nothing but to give, set you free. If you know the doctrine, the doctrine will set you free. If you don't know the doctrine, you cannot be set free. You will be a trap for such morons in this earth. So if you truly have the fear of the Lord God, was the unction given to you, 1 John 2, 20 and 27, make up to be the disciples. If you don't know the reading, God the Father in his technology is able to provide now reading Bible apps. You just go and click there, they go on to read. You hear. Make a careful notice of that. 
Look and understand what exactly is the demand of the Bible because tomorrow you die if you are not qualified. We have salvation by faith alone in Christ alone. Many are called, few are chosen. And then when you say that you will be in the wedding garment of the Son of the Lord, but you don't have the wedding garment in the invitation of the Lord. He says, Atiros, friend, why is that you don't have the wedding garment? And he says, he is speechless. Because there are no reasons behind that, what you were thinking. What was the driving force to that thought? What was your perception of your nine holes of your body? He says all those things, the reasons, what you might be cooked up now to say, I haven't learned, I do not know how to read. You know, men are very smart enough to give all reasons and excuses. Never they accept. For lie, they build up lie, another thousand lies. Never they accept the fact, the truth, and they be confessed. Never they come to realize the truth. And that's what today men are. Never they realize to confess and to take up their cross every day and follow my Christ. Never. In each and everything, they would just love to give reasons upon reasons. So, dear brethren, if your meat is not the will of God the Father, better stop eating the grace of God in vain glory. Search out what are your lives. Your fellow men are perishing. You are an advantaged one. And Apostle Paul says about his men, he says, when they come, they will talk to you many more things. Everything what has happened over here, they will detailly describe. But today men are not there to be the standards of detailedly describing the fear of the Lord. Though we have been given the completed canon of scripture. Though we have been told for believers in Christ you are a king, you are a priest, you are an ambassador to Christ. An ambassador of a country represents everything of that country. The ambassador of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Do you represent everything to your fellow slaves, to your fellow believers? As a fellow slave, he mentioned, the spirit of prophecy is witnessing the truth. But you don't have any testimony for you. Therefore, Lord of God says in Mark chapter 14, Sleep on, the third time when he comes. He knows now the hour has come, so there is nothing that you can do. So he says, Sleep on. Don't worry, sleep on. You have nothing to do on this earth, sleep on. And yet men are not happy to look and understand the importance of this word. The second time when he came, they were also speechless. Because he said for the first time when he came, can't you wait with me for one hour and pray? And he goes to pray again to do the same thing. He finds them. They were heavy. They were burdened with their eyes. They couldn't wait. So when he comes the second watch and he looks, their eyes were very burdened, or very heavy. He says, nothing, because they were not able to have an answer. The third time when he comes, he says, sleep on. That's exactly the church is doing now, though God the Father has told to stay in this one hour in the sense in this great dispensation of this time what we have in this church age the unique age the unique age of being in well Lord God the Holy Ghost the unique age of where we survive for Christ in this entering ministry of Lord God the Holy Ghost this unique age and what has happened today people are not happy to serve Christ in this unique age, they want to sleep off. They want to take care of their family, their wife, their children, their father, mother, and their own life. But the reason why I've been kept alive to take care of your fellow man's soul, if he's not able to learn, read and write, teach him, not for charge. Give him graciously the word of God. Do it. But what are doing today, dear brother, in our pulpits? They are really not able to make up your life to the demands of the Word of God. 
How would you enter tomorrow after you die? Why do you want to perish in your own sins, not being valiant for the truth, not being witnesses for the truth? In order to perish for your own sins, there is no need to put a hypocritical mask of attack called Christian. Anyhow, the demands of the word of Lord God are not going to meet. You are going to go to hell. Better stop blaspheming the name of my Christ under your names of Christianity from the Bible. Because anyhow you will not become a disciple. Anyhow you will not grow up into grammar. Yes, anyhow you are not eating up or eaten up with the burden of the Lord of a God in making disciples of all the nations. So why do you simply want to live a life and blaspheme me the name of my Lord among unbelievers and think you have really done great work for Christ? You know, dear brethren, Colossians 1, 24-29, it teaches to us, everyone should be presented before the presence of God the Father, perfect and complete, individual one, every individual believer. It is not that you have so many people becoming your subscribers. It is not that so many people are liking your videos. It is not that. It is what each and every one who has been there for you, you have to present them to God the Father, perfect and complete. And this is the burden what we have for a pastor teacher in the church age, if they have been sent by God the Father. You know, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ said in Matthew 18, where two or three have been gathered, it will reduce to such number. It is not the professing believers. It is not a huge quantity of men which enters into the Christian into the eternity. It is very few believers or few believers of quality in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, producing the fruit of Christ. They will have inheritance, he said in Galatians 5, the fruit of the Spirit. Because you have the fruit of light, Agathe Sune, Dikaya Sune, and Aletia. Tomorrow, the life what you're living today, if you haven't been looking in the time mature enough in making up the word of Lord God to be number one priority and going and training the fellow flock, if you're not performing, that if you're not doing that, if you're not engaging in the business of the Lord, then what life is that using the grace of God for vain glory? To be content, you know, today as Joshua told long back over there, me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. And today, the men, though have been born in the church age, they say, we shall serve our own family, our own belly, let the fellow men perish who seldom cares. When Joshua told it was a time of apostasy where the people rejected, he knew now. In 23rd chapter of Joshua, he makes them to have a witness. He calls the witness the stones, the tree, the nature in simple words. And he says, you cannot serve the true jealous living Lord God because you are having sin in you. They said, we serve, we can serve. He said, no, you cannot serve that Lord. Because the same thing today for us. You cannot serve this true living Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is all the time holy, holy, holy who has all the time given to you be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, and who has all the time given to us the burden of going and making disciples of all the nations, looking to know the hunger of the Lord. You cannot serve, dear brethren. You're really not able to understand the Lord God whom you are dealing with in this church age. You cannot serve Him. You're thinking you can, but you cannot. And today, men are not happy to look the demands of the word of God. Dear brethren, grace is grace. Sometimes law would have been better. You know why? Because under the law, you are having some restrictions. But in grace, you are free to love God. At the same time, in this grace, you are grieving and squelching and waxing and lying and resisting. And you are sinning against Lord God, the Holy Ghost. Be careful about that. Under that law of the Old Testament, like Perez Uzziah, if ever you would do contrary to the will of God, he would put to death. And in the same time, when we look in Ananias and Sapphira, instantly when they have been put to death, 
after the realm of spreading disciples more and more in Acts chapter 6, looking into the standards when the word of Lord God was being multiplied, disciples were multiplied. So when he looks upon that, he's giving them some instructions where they could change, they could become the word of God, they could become the mind of Christ. And he gives them this great privilege to realize the importance that be saved rather than dying sin unto death. But we now go on to be in grace. We sin on in grace. And you think if we confess our sins we shall get back. But really dear brethren you are not able to understand. That is not a license to sin. It is a license to serve by God for those people who are really engaged in the serious business of my Christ day by day learning the word of God. It is not for the religious crowd who would come weekly once. Because though God the Father is gracious and merciful, who would give you and grant you that privilege to come back to the fellowship. But it is a license to serve God moment by moment, breath by breath, because we reside in the realm of the holiness of God. As Joshua said, you cannot serve such true living Lord of a God. As Joshua introduced for us the concept over there, today you look, you cannot serve at the cost of perishing souls your own belly. How we could have a great joy, how we could have a great meat, you know, the way how King, who is an unbeliever in Daniel 6, he did not entertain with himself in that night because Daniel was put into the lion's den. And the Bible records, even if a man who is an unbeliever, who is worried about his believing friends so much, then we being believers, how much we should be worried, first of all, for the believing friends to get acquainted with the Lord, and second, to those unbelieving men who are perishing without knowing the gospel of the Lord. So first, if you as a believer, you are worried about the standards of growing up to conform to the image of Christ, then quite obviously you will be absolutely worried about to look upon the standards of unbelieving men who are perishing without the gospel. And unbelieving men will attract towards you, not by a force of conversion, not by a force of this or that, but because of the peace that you have in Christ. Because of the joy that you have in the Spirit. Because of the confidence that you have after you die, you have eternal life. Because all the gods of this earth are for only for the earth. The only Lord God which can take you out of the earth into eternity is Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And he said in John chapter 14, the peace what I have, the world cannot give you. At least your joy, peace, and eternity life of confidence. People like unbelievers will love to look, will love to come, because nothing on this earth the man want to lose that could give for him freely, graciously. By grace, he said, you're going to have this eternal life free. And the witnessing for that grace is what our life is all about. Don't become a hurdle become grace. And today people are not happy to understand grace. Therefore they serve their own families. They serve their own bellies. They serve their own standards of selfish lusts. How they are able to eat. The king himself in Daniel 6, being an unbeliever for his believing friend, he paid such a great homage. The same thing with Jonah case. The unbelievers, they are asking forgiveness to the Lord because they are trying to put a soul into the water. Jonah, though he's been the man of God. They confess and they come back to the shore and they give a great sacrifice, saying that let that blood of that innocent soul let be not upon us. <laughs> but we are enjoying our life in the details of this earth at the cost of such perishing souls showing their pictures 
showing their photos and saying we are not having proper equipment you know we are not having this we are not having that everything they can provide but god only provides a pastor teacher to train them up so in the meantime let them first read the word of god let them get acquainted with the mind of christ let them know their burden in the lord let them know the willing of call of lord in their lives and that dear brethren as joshua said it was to yehovah elohim alone <laughs> but today if you say me and my house we shall serve you know whom you are serving you are serving not yehovah elohim but on the name of yehovah elohim you are serving your own family that's what the men are today not even having a great pain like that king a great pain like that captain of that ship in the life of jonah unbelievers are having that compassion but we believers are not having compassion on christ to look his mercy and understand the great agony of him that my men are perish for the lack of knowledge and when there is no proper revolution of the word of lord god there the people will perish and to pay back his great mental agony in our lives by becoming the word of lord god and teaching to them the mind of christ in mark 14:33 when we look it is not the agony which is going to be for him at the time of the death it is the agony the depressed state of him because people are perishing because he knows they are not having enough content in the word of god that same agony what apostle paul writes in colossians 1 the vicarious sufferings we cannot pay but the mental agony of my christ the afflictions of christ which i have to pay through my body to him at least a little role little part making every believer perfect and complete but today dear brethren men are not happy to eat the lord's will to be their meat and in order to eat the lord's will to be their meat grammatias growing up and making disciples of all the nations that would be the only eating for you in this pilgrimage and if you would think what is there for us we can only have our life to be saved and secured in first corinthians 15:19 he says we are the men of most miserable most pitiable because you are living a life on this earth just to have christ as your god and to reject his teachings in the reality of your life dear brethren revelation 21:7 and 8 21:27 it teaches to us the importance that anyone who loveth a lie maketh a lie will not be found in the book of the lamb of god the revelation 20 the two books being opened up here the book refers to the entire mind of christ from genesis 1 1 to revelation 20 to 21 anyone who makes the things common and defiled that means to have be reckless to the will of god to the power of god he says i will take them into account an account not to be with christ but to be burning in the lake of fire So don't alter the things which have been given for us in the Bible by reducing to say as the woman said lust you shall die rather than knowing surely you shall die dear brother and think over these issues life is too short at the responsible to lay down upon our shoulders is too large we shall come back and continue tomorrow as lord god the holy ghost leadeth us to the praise of his glory in his grace with our head bowed and eyes closed the closing moments being dedicated to those of without christ without hope and without eternal life in our will telling to lord god the father in the privacy of your soul that you believe my christ my lord my rock my savior that's the moment itself you shall have the eternal truth the eternal truth for us for very simple believing christ we shall be saved Whereas for the believers, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. 
by the teacher learned not quite to possess to know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And for the past two teachers, the greatest man is to care to show Thon Lagan. Herald the word in season and out of season because of the diamond from my witnesses where we have been called. The number one diamond from my witnesses in building Trinity, followed by Bible in our hands. And number two diamond from my witnesses are hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, not worry besides nature, the entire angelic coast will be witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter how ever the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brother, and you decide. We shall come back and continue tomorrow. As Lord God, the Holy Ghost leadeth us to the praise of His glory and His grace. And since there is too much of wind, if there is disturbance, let listen to the word of God, because doing the will of God the Father is the only meat what we can eat. As Christ, our Lord, our God, exemplifies the testimony. My meat is to do the will of God the Father. So, dear brethren, at the cost of the perishing souls, the souls looking upon the time we should be communicators for them, at the cost of such innocent ones, don't enjoy your life, because many of them will be found, not just the one whom he called a tyros, but at the way these people are rejecting the word of the Lord God, many of them will be found naked without having the garments. And you will be the reasons to be followed because you haven't opened up your mouth to teach the truth. Tell them the truth or exercise truth in your life first so that they could also learn truth from you. Dear brother, and think over these issues as we shall come back and continue tomorrow as Lord God the Holy Ghost leadeth us to the praise of His glory in His grace. Infinitely divine, Holy Father, what a great and unique privilege it is to have fellowship with you through the word. We pray the words of Job chapter 31, verses 13 and 14, O Lord. If we are not faithful to the ones that which belonging to you, how we could have our own resurrection body that which is ours. When to be found in the presence faithful enough in rightly dividing the word of God and witnessing the truth in the midst of this people. So Father, help us to show them what is the real meat to eat. And help us to teach them the thing that which makes us to alive to sustain on this earth and to continue is that as gravity as going and making disciples of all the nations. This section, Father, we pray that Lord God the Holy Ghost would enlighten and challenge us by this message. In Christ's matchless, purest, gracious name we pray, Father. Amen.